Um, but using those three things, I, I, I talked about how we'll, we'll look at ways of kind of prioritizing the canvas. So I kind of look at those three things when I look at the canvases. Once We only built one canvas here, but I would recommend kind of brainstorming other possible businesses. Like even in the last example, someone brought up the, you know, the more higher end customer. There's a whole spectrum of startups and a whole spectrum of potential customers that could benefit from email marketing. Trying to see if there are others that you haven't considered and maybe there are some places that are are better, more lower hanging fruits where they're already doing this stuff that you can start with and not with with you know mobile startups who again maybe like you are more interested in just building their product than even worrying about marketing at this point. So it's like, again one of those things where you have to kind of test that, but it's worthwhile brainstorming. So the the one one thing that I kind of look at when I look at my canvases, put them side by side, is look at the customer pain level and come up with some kind of a ranking of is this a high, medium, low um, from my my own assessment. And I, the second thing I look at is the channel thing, is I look at ease of reach. Like, do I have the ability to reach these customers on my own? And if not, then maybe this is not a, a canvas that I particularly start with right now. Finally, you look at things like price and gross margin. So more important than price is gross margin. Like, I might be selling an enterprise product, but have a huge sales cycle. And so what I make at the end is actually, um, it's actually a long sales cycle, long learning process, but I even though I have a big ticket item, there's a lot of effort that goes into selling that. So my margins may not be as high as the, the, the big ticket item itself. But if I have a, a, a subscription model, I might have something that's more, that's easier to test. Go ahead. Sure. So, it, it, so in the earlier stages, it's, it's looking at that break-even point. So, so for 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 a, if, if I look at um, a lot of things that I do, is I I outsource everything that is non-core. So I have a lot of software services that I use. So everything from hosting to um, you know bug tracking. I would say that for the, the the marginal cost for building a lot of web stuff today is pretty low. So that's not really kind of as much of a consideration, but there are still operating costs. So there's the kind of the fixed cost, the people cost that kind of go go with that. And I'm kind of looking at that, like deliver this stuff out there. What are my margins at the end of that? Um, and also looking at just so the, so the operational cost of keeping keeping the lights on, keeping the services up and running would be would be more a factor there. Now, if I am giving away storage, like in that last example, the, the media sharing example, there are like storage costs, which over the years have really gone down. So it's actually much more cost effective to where it's almost marginally insignificant as it was, say, five, 10 years ago. So those can also factor in to, to those kinds of uh, considerations. Um, and then I add on to two other. I add on two other things. One is market size and feasibility. So the market size is important because it has to represent. Be re so even though we have gone down and narrowed our our focus to these early adopters, we still have this segment that has to be big enough to meet your goals of whatever you want to do with this product. Whether it's a hundred million dollar business, a ten million dollar business, a one million dollar business, it has to be representative of that. And so even with the example that I showed, like one of the things I kind of alluded to is we were happy staying with the parents market because we found that there are enough parents that we could actually build a pretty healthy business just focusing on that one market. So it, it wasn't big enough to kind of meet our goals. Now if we would spread a, away from there, um, we'd, we'd potentially consider it, but that was a big enough segment that we were, we were happy being there even though we were, we were kind of sub-segmenting within it. Um, so any questions on this kind of prioritization? I'll kind of break that into an example here. So I mentioned there were these four segments that we were considering, parents, photographers, videographers, consumers. And so I'll quickly walk through how I, I assess the canvases, not show them to you because it'll be too much to kind of go through each one. But on the parents market, you've already seen that canvas. We looked at the customer pain level and our assessment of it was that it's pretty high. I mean, these are parents who have very little time. They want to share content. It's painful. So we think the pain level is high it, and we can probably uh, and we can probably deliver something that reduces that pain. We felt the ease of reach was medium. Like we could actually go out um, with our, the fact that we were now parents, we kind of gave ourselves permission to go and, and reach out to a, a number of parents that were here local, but we didn't have necessarily a clear strategy for reaching like many of those parents. So we, at this point, ra ranked it as medium. 
the, the margins were definitely kind of lower because it was a $49 a year plan to, to actually reach even break even point. We had to hit 2,000 parents, which is a lot of people uh, when you're talking about an early, early service like that. Um, market size, there are just by the number of parents and number of kids out there was pretty big. So if there was a way to kind of figure out that, that channel, um, this could be a big enough market for what we wanted to do. The technical feasibility was high because we had experience in a previous product that looked very much like this, a sister product. Looking at photographers, kind of very similar on pain level. Ease of reach was lower because we weren't photographers. We weren't in the photography business. We didn't have really any way other than, than cold calling or using referral networks to get to interviews. So we didn't quite know how we would find them other than the obvious, you know, their events and their places we can go and hang out. But we didn't feel like we had a very high ease of reach. Um, the margins were better than the parents, but they still were not um, great. So there was, you know, we, we found that we would, for what they were paying, their alternatives were in the $200 price range a year. Um, so it was more than what parents were paying, but it was still not like a very expensive product. Uh, market size against high, technical feasibility was again high. It was very similar with the videographers, but there we actually ranked it lower on technical feasibility simply because video is just a lot more complicated. And we're going to take this video here, which is going to be something in the order of 60 meg, 60 gigabytes at the end of it, maybe even higher. Um, so, so when you deal with videographers, you're talking about large amounts of, of content that's being moved back and forth. And we had never tested our, our solution at, at those levels, so we felt like that was a risk we what that was, that was from a technical point of, point of view, it was a much higher risk than just sharing photos, even high res photos. On the consumer side, there, the, 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 so this was the scratch, scratch my own itch scenario where I really thought this would be a cool product to build, um, but the pain level was really low. It was just really more of a nice to have product. I mean, do I really need to have my music everywhere I go? I mean, it's a nice to have, it's not really a must have. Um, and that kind of reduced the chances that we'd be able to charge out the gate. It would be something that probably would be a freemium model. Uh, maybe there'd be other sec you know, premium services which we hadn't quite thought through yet, but either backup or, or storage-based or something like that, cloud-based, which you're seeing now. Um, but at that point, we, we saw that this, of all of them, this seemed to be the one that had kind of the weakest business model, even though it was the one that I wanted to build kind of the most. And so using this kind of priority scheme, we, we decided to at least in initially pursue these two and go and interview parents and go and interview photographers in parallel and see which ones to really kind of work with. Oh yeah, so it's, yeah, so I would say like it, that was just a simple scoring where I did low, medium, high, one, two, three, and just added them up. So just some way of scoring this thing. You can come up with, with a more elaborate model, but that was just a simple way of, of converting them and, and, and seeing what that is. And you can also just do a gut feel check because there are some cases where like the low, medium, high is also too subjective. Like I feel like the ease of reach, um, in some cases, like uh, like if I was trying to build a file sharing product and go to the go to to uh, and try to go to defense uh, use case, that that would be just so 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 in, um, hard to do that I would immediately just rule that out. I wouldn't even like bother ranking it. But in the brainstorming, it's just worthwhile to still come up with a short list and then find some way to narrow that down to to a handful of things you can go you can go test out.